Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm here with a bit of a continuation video, should we call it. Now, um, in one of my previous videos, and I will do my best to link it, I showed you how I create one of these, um, I don't know what I want to call them, impression mats, texture mats for my jelly printing, and I did show you that I created a few more as I went along. And I promised in that video that I would show you using using some of these. So I brought those out. Those are what we're going to be working with. Um, I do want to say before we even start though, this is not a tutorial. The Jelly Plate Play series is purely me taking you along because when I asked you all whether you wanted to see it, you said yes. So I'm just bringing you along for the ride really. Okay, this is my um, red box. And my red box, as you know, I have a storage system, which is, I call it a traffic light system. Red means they're just a background. Amber means they're almost finished. Green means they're completely finished. So this is just a box of backgrounds that I put together. I'm going to choose, let's say, about five of them. And we'll work on them today and see if we can turn them amber. Okay, I quite like that one. Um, these are literally, I... I just made a whole part, that's quite a nice one. Um, I just made a whole of, load of different backgrounds. Actually, that's quite a cute one too. And I just, there, yeah, that one, actually that might work, it's nice and bright. Um, how many is that? Let's see, that's five. Okay, um, and it's just because I don't really want to work on a blank page straight away. I'd rather work on something else. Oh, that's cute. Oh, I might swap that one out. Let me have a little look. Sorry, moment of thought here. I think I'm going to swap it out for that one. There you go. Right, so let's put this box to one side, out of my way. Now, I'm going to be using my um, 12 by 12 jelly plate, purely because these are 12 by 12 papers. I do have different size jelly plates, which I incorporate as I use them. Um, as and when the project I'm using them for. So I'm going to be using just regular acrylic paints today. Um, I will try and give you the names of them as I go along, but I'm notoriously bad for forgetting to do that. Um, what I'm going to be doing is we'll work on these, these five. Now, um, I don't expect them to become finished papers at this point, but I just want to show you how you can utilize them and how they can be used per se. Now, because of the size of this plate, I can't pull my camera up that way so you can see twice as much. So what I'm going to do is the papers are going to be over to one side here and I'm going to be lifting paint from here and pressing it onto the papers over there and then I'll bring them back in to show you purely because if I try moving stuff back and forth with the drying time which is quite short with some of these paints, I'm never going to get them done. So I think we need to just make a start. So I'm going to start with the round one. I'm going to jump between all of them, but I'm going to start with the round one because that's the one you saw me actually create. I'm just going to use my small brayer. I do have other brayers. So I've got a bigger one and I've got a couple of other sized ones, but I'm just going to stick with my speedball today. Um, it's the one I probably use the most anyway. So, right, um, let's have a little look. So we've got this as a color palette. Um, what do I want to add to this? We've got greens on there, We've, we can put whites on there. Um, I'm thinking this needs a little bit of drama. And I'm thinking somewhere along the lines of, that's a Tuscan red. I was thinking more of a terracotta colour, to be honest with you. That's I think that's one of my random mixes. Um, let's see if that comes out okay. I might just do a few different colours on the plate as we go along. Okay, let's put a few dots of those. Now, I don't normally go straight onto my plate, as you know. I normally do do it on my 5x7 and transfer it across. But I thought, let's live dangerously. Let's just do this the way I want to do it today. So I've got that colour down. I want to add something that's got a little bit of punch to it. So this is purple. Um, as you're seeing it on screen, I'm probably not going to name everything because I'll just forget to name it anyway. So... Let's give this a little bit of a brayer. Now, as I said, um, I'm no expert in jelly printing. I'm not pretending to be an expert in jelly printing. And 
it's going to probably take me a long time before I would become an expert in jelly printing. So I'm just brayering that out just with a gentle motion and I'm going to just clean my brayer off on some spare paper that's over here. I'm going to take the round impressions that I did and I'm going to line it up with my plate and I'm going to give it a firm press, press down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this off here, press it onto the first sheet of 12 by 12 which is over to my left and um, basically stamp this paint onto there. So come up now. The reason I like using these plates is because it doesn't always transfer a perfect image across and that's what I want. So as you can see, if I lift it up, it gives me that, which is exactly what I was looking for. Now what I want to do, well I've got this on the go. See I've got these white areas around the edges. I'm just going to come in, I'm literally going to almost repair that just by picking up little bits here and there. So that, that means that there's some interest on this. Put a little bit in that corner as well. So that will just give me three points of colour. Now, I'm going to do it one more time onto this one and then I'm going to do something with um, what's left. Actually, no. Sorry, changing my mind. I'm going to do it with this one. Um, I'm going to stamp this onto that one as well. Again, coming in, I did have a reasonably thick coating of paint on my jelly plate so that I can actually do more than one pull with this stamping method. But as you can see, I now have interest on this plate, which I will lift up in a second with one of my other prints. Um, when you're doing jelly printing, I mean, look, that's that puts some really nice levels of layers in there. When you're doing jelly printing, you will never do just one jelly print. So I'm going to take the yellow one that I had and I'm going to, there's that white, I want the white covered up. Put that down on there and give it a bit of a smooth down with my hand. Now, that was the first time I used this and the surface of the fun foam that I used to attach um, was a little bit porous. I don't mind that. But what you'll find is, as you use it, because I never clean this, you'll build up more and more layers of acrylic paint on the fun foam. And what that will do is it will eventually transfer or translate into further texture as you go along. So it's always interesting to see how they develop. Um, let's see if I can find an old one. Okay, this is my previous one. And listen, you can really hear the texture and see the texture on here. Now I made this one, ooh, a couple of years ago and I wanted a square one, so that's why that one has become that one. So let's just take that one out of the way. So let's see what we've pulled up here, shall we? I think that's pretty darned impressive. I like that, nice and interesting. I'm going to try and lift up little bits just to fill in bits that look as if I've missed them, do you know what I mean? And I know I haven't missed them, it's just that maybe I just needed to pay a little more attention to those areas. Right, just get some, come of that white covered up because I don't want white on here. So I'm just picking up randomly as I go along. So there you go, that's given me a really, that's interesting. That turned that plain yellow just into something really extraordinary. Now, because I've got stuff on the plate, I'm just going to take this one, which is another one we're going to use. And I've got a feeling I'm going to be doing far more than five with this session because I've only used one plate so far and I've already altered four, four backgrounds. Now you can, of course, stop wherever you choose. See, that's just give me another layer of something on there. You can stop wherever you want with jelly printing. Um, Right, that's just got some stuff on it and what I might do is I might find another really plain one in this box. Bear with me, I know I'm off to one side. Actually there you go, there's a nice plain one. And what I might do is I might just come in and lift that off with something just to give me a little something special which I can add to this one. Let's go with a bit of green. Now this green I know is quite a fluid green. Um, it's one of those pots where I put ends of other pots in so I know it, it's going to be reasonably liquid. 
um, so a little bit will go a long way. Now I'm just going to put this on here just so I can lift off this brown. Um, I couldn't tell you whether this is opaque, transparent, semi-transparent, whatever, because it is a combination of other colours that have actually been put into the same bottle. I tend to do that just to keep just to keep it to the point where I'm almost not recycling, but I'm getting the most I can out of everything. I'm going to lift a bit of this off with some tissue, just, just to give myself a little less on there. And then I'm going to come in and hopefully lift off a good portion of what was on there. Now, um, you could leave your papers on the plate to fully dry. Um, I very, very, very rarely do that. I'm just going to turn this around and give it a second pull, purely because I've got a feeling I'll get a really good ghost print off this. Um, yeah, I really, very rarely leave my papers on here to dry for a very long. I just do them until until I feel I'm ready to pull them, to be honest. But I do know that lots of people do leave them for considerable amounts of time. So there you go. That's one we didn't intend, but you know, that's fine. That'll go back into the red box, and that's another stage closer to the work I wanted. There's still muck on this. I don't mind that. That's fine. As we're doing circle type stuff, let's look at this. Now, it's worth saying, if you created these onto grey board, which is what I call this as grey board, um, I tend to flex them so that they, they flatten themselves out a bit, because sometimes as you add the blues to this, they tend to get a little warped, but over time they flatten themselves back out. Right, let's, this is the one I'm going to work on. So now if I was going to do something on here that was opaque, I could use yellow. Um, or do I want to be a little more subtle about things on this one? Or not subtle. Let's see how orange looks and um, because I think the contrasting colour to purple is yellow but I quite like orange and purple together so I think we're going to take a little bit of a pot shot at this and I, at the end of the day I don't mind it's all all I'm wasting or doing is using paint paper in my time and I'm having some fun doing it. Now if there's any green left on my brayer, green and orange are probably going to make a muddy sort of brown colour. Again, I'm not worrying. And I think that's one of the secrets to actually gel plating or mono printing is just have fun with it. It's a perfect medium to experiment with. Right, as you can see, I've got a reasonably good liquid amount on there. I'm going to press down the polos or the lifesavers or the hoops or the hula hoops or whatever you want to call them. I'm just going to give it a bit of a press down. I'm going to move quite quickly and lay onto the 12 by 12 and press it down. Already we're getting a nice something in the background and I could jump across and pick up another shape if I wanted. Something I would suggest though is if you're going to stamp um, a second time on here, turn your um, your texture mat or your texture board or you'll call it impression mat turn it 90 degrees or turn it up the other way purely because then you won't have things in the same place so let's peel this off and see what we did to this okay that gave me some interest so I'm going to pull in this one that we did a bit of a clean up on I'm going to turn my board a 90 degree come in and pop it down again and see if I can lift any off there, which I will be able to, I know. And this one is beginning to get quite complex. I like the fact that there are some serious levels, sorry, serious layers going on. And that's what the fun of this is. When I look at jelly printing or I look at pieces of art done with it, I like to be able to look into the background. I like the fact that I can look in and actually see depth and look through. And I think the more layers are on it, as long as you've used your common sense and not actually made the whole thing look really, really muddy, then the more layers there are, the more interesting it is to me. Okay, that's added another layer to that. Let's put that to one side, put the hoops to one side. So I've got this on the plate here. 
Um, it's quite wet, so I'm not worried. I'm, I'm not living in Texas, which I know my friends Patricia and Mara live in Texas, and their paints dry out so fast they have to put a retardant in them. Um, I don't have to do that here in Wales because it's, it's always wet. Well, it always feels like it's wet anyway. Mind you saying that, we've got a beautiful sunny day. I'm looking out of my window. I'm on the second floor here and I'm looking out over my garden and yes, there's washing on the line, you know me. So, right, let's lift this off and see what I've come up with here. There you go, just another layer of interest on there. Let's have a look, see if there's something else. There's still some on there. I don't think I'm gonna get a lot off it. In fact, I'm gonna put it onto this one, which means a lot of it won't really show up. But that's actually nice as well, because I'll just have hints of, should we call it. Now, if I was to leave this down, it would probably activate more of the paint and lift more each time, but that's not the way I'm working. There you go, that's given me some subtleties. I quite like this area here that it's just introduced stuff into, and the stuff on the plate doesn't bother me. Um, how wet is that? That's okay, I might just put something on here to lift that off now. So let's put the spares down there. Right, what colour shall I use on here? Yep, just slightly damp. Um, let's use a little bit of transparent yellow. Um, this is Studio by Peep, I can never say the words. I'm not gonna embarrass myself by trying to say the words either because I'm just really bad at saying the words. So all I'm doing is I'm just putting something down so I can use some tissue paper to actually lift off the muck on my mat and that way, uh, on my plate, sorry, and that way I'll have a reasonably clean start for the next one I do. Now, when I'm gonna lift something, I do have quite a thin coating on there. Now I'm working on tissue, so it'll pick up most things. With tissue, I don't really bother trying to lay the tissue down flat because these little creases in here really will add just that little layer of interest to the next plate I put down here. Uh, didn't lift off a lot. That's fine, it probably lifted off more of the yellow than it lifted off anything else. But we shall move on, people. So, right. Um, which one should we do next? Right, let's have a quick look at this one. Now, this one to me, it was weird. This sort of reminded me of a circuit board. Um, and I don't, I don't know why it reminded me of a circuit board. Probably because I put the graph in the background before I drew it all down. So I need to find a paper for that one. Because guess what? I've already used up all the papers. Um, let's have a quick flick through and see if I can find something that's going to jump out of me. There you go. Let's use that one, shall we? Um, now, because this is pretty much warm colours um, in the warm spectrum, except for that teal or turquoise, I think I possibly want to jump across, and I'm thinking purples or blues on this one. Now, it's going to pick up this as well, so it's going to be purples, blues, yellows and oranges, so a bit of a mixture going on there, but I don't mind that. I'm, I'm okay at experimenting and putting stuff down, so... I'm going to grab, um, that's violet purple, just the odd little bit of that on there. Um, yes, okay, just having a thoughtful moment. Um, I think I'm going to put a bit of blue metallic down. Um, not overly certain a lot of this is going to pick up, but it is a reasonably bright metallic, so some of it might. And I forgot what other colour I said I was going to do. Da, 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 maybe a red. I think I said red. Let's see what's this one. Cadmium red, deep hue. Let's put some of that on there. It's going to be quite a colourful plate. Remember, we're lifting the paint off and we're putting it onto the other piece. So um, I try to brayer the sections um, that are lighter and then work my way into the other colours if that makes sense. Like I've done the lightest colour which is blue, I've done the next colour in the spectrum in my mind which is the purple and then I'll put the red in. Now I don't want to overbrayer this, I don't want mud, I just want colour. So let's come in, 
I've got my piece sat to one side. Let's take the board, flip it over, give it a press out. Well, I was obviously intending to do another one on the other side of here. Or I think maybe this is where I started to draw it out and realised I'd put too many lines and then decided to change my mind in it. So I picked that up, pop it down, give it a good press. Now, as you can see, that's going to be a really interesting piece there. Um, I'm half tempted to actually go and get a clean, a clean piece to pick that up on, but you never know, I might put it on tissue. So that's what that has given me. Now I'm going to turn it, I've turned it 90 degrees because I want to pick up some other stuff. And what this will do is if it's picking up from an area that's already been picked up from, it will probably give me little squares instead. Let's reach that across, drop that down. Give me a little bit of a press with my hand and let's see what we've got. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I'm okay with that. Right, these white bits need to be gone in my mind. So as we've got pattern in those colours, I don't mind picking it up just by kissing the paper down on it. See, it's giving me a really nice checkered effect there. And I might do a little bit more of that. That, see, that's giving me interest a little bit more over there, I feel. There you go. Right, and I think what I want to do is we had this purple one from before. I think I'm going to come in and see what I can lift onto that one as well. Right, get that down there. Get it quite a good burnish down. And let that sit for a second. So again, because this was the first time I've used it, the first layer of paints will sort of embed themselves into the fun foam. Although the more I use it, the more it will cover these and then I get more textural transfer as I go along. Ooh, big words for me today, isn't it? Textural transfer. I don't even know whether that's real words. I could just be making that up to sound important. Right, well that's sat there. I'm going to need another couple of pieces. So let's let's have another rummage in the old box and see what's what's it. With. That definitely needs something. That's a bit wishy washy. Can't find something that's got a bit of drama to it. Ooh, gold. Maybe we'll do something that's got some gold on it. That should please Mariah. Mariah from PM Artist Studios. She always tends to. I don't want to say wind up, but she does tend to um, tease her mother, Patricia, by asking for gold a lot. Well, there you go, Em. That's enough gold to sink a ship. So we'll have a look. We may do something gold on that anyway. So let's peel this off and see where we're up to. It sat a little longer, so obviously it's picked up quite a bit more of the muck that's on the board, on the plate. Now that looks nothing like it looked before. And I'm extremely happy at that. I'm wondering whether I can just try and get a little bit on this edge, which looks like it's just a little bit white. I doubt it, but not a lot. So you have to be careful because sometimes see where the circle of paint from the previous one wasn't fully dried. It will grab that paper and pull it off. So have to be a little bit careful of that one. So I think what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to, I want to get some of this off of here because, um, purely because, I just, I want that lifted. And I think what I'm gonna do is, because this is a really vibrant green one, I think I wanna put some white on here and see if I can lift this uh, off, which will knock this green back a bit before we start the next round. Um, where are we up to? Windsor and Newton, um, this is just titanium white. Um, I quite like this brand, to be honest. Uh, I think I like it because the paint is reasonably heavy bodied. And by that, I mean, it's it's not fluid. As you can see, it just it holds its shape. Um, I also find this really good for pulling prints because it just is, uh, in my opinion, of course. I mean, every, everything is up to whomever wants to use it. But. I've got quite a bit of paint on there actually. I think that might just be a bit too much. I think I might actually just try and lift some of that off onto one of our previous prints. So let's get let's get this one and see if I can't just put some of these lines onto it. That'll just lift some of the paint away from here. 
Now, another reason I like using these, um, that's fun. That's not far off finished. I'm going to put that to one side because I don't want to mess with that anymore. Um, without considered thought. I'm going to do the same on this one though. Um, the reason I like using or like making these these boards is purely because everything I create with them then is uniquely mine. I've not I've not used anyone else's products. So if I do decide to do um, a dish of my prints, then that's totally fine because it's mine. I can do them. I've designed them. I've done everything I want to them. See, that's cute. And see what I mean where I've picked up areas where I haven't pressed the impression before and these areas are where I have. So I've grabbed two lots of paint of the same one. So this is a green. Now I know with this one I'm going to lose a lot of that green but because I've got those areas on here where um, I've picked up um, when I was making these I know that I'm now going to have um, areas where the green will come through. So what we'll do is once I've actually finished with the very last one because I've got one more to do we'll take a flick through and have a look at what we've created. Oh, that didn't pick up a lot at all did it? However that did give me something very interesting to work with. I'm okay with that. I'm just going to touch that down there just to lift that off. I'm okay with that. Right, that will have to, that's quite wet. I'll sit that to one side. Give this a little bit of a brayer. I doubt whether I'm going to get anything off it, but I'm just going to put this bit down. I'm going to clean my brayer off on the back. Purely just to get my mat a little bit cleaner. There you go. That's, that's knocked that into more of a muted sort of oldie painted wall effect not not offended by that got stuff on here don't mind that that's totally fine right let's see we've got this one to go now I like this one and I like this one a lot because if let's see if I can get a bit of paper on the thing if I only stamp that much can you see it that much along the bottom edge of a print that looks like a skyscape to me I can print the whole thing that way and then turn it that way and I'll end up with a checkered effect, which is what I think I'm going to do on this one, to be honest with you. Now, let's have a think. We've got gold. So gold is pretty much the yellow spectrum. Opposite to the that would be things like blues and purples. And I've got some teal in here. I'm wondering whether I should pull in some sort of teal colours. Because, of course, blue and yellow make green. This is sort of a teal greenish colour. So I could add blues and I think I want to add, add something tealish or greenish to this. So let's have a little bit of a think. Um, I mean, I've got things like this, which are a bit jade, which I think that's a shamrock. Sorry. This is the jade, which is what I'm thinking. Um, there's also an olive green. Olive green would be interesting. I wonder whether it tells me. It doesn't tell me how, whether these are transparent or not. I don't think they are. Um, I've just made myself, and I'm very, very pleased with myself. Um, I'll get paint all over it. I've just made myself a little, a little book, and I've put papers in it. I'm going to do swatches of all of my paints with the names under them and all the details. So that's another project that I'm going to do personally. I will, I will show you that in the future. But I got that idea of Patricia at PM Artist Studios, Studio, sorry, and it's a great idea, and I think it's going to work really, really well for me. So let's have another thing. So I want something that's bluey or green. Or purple. Um, trying to find a blue that's dark enough. I think that's wrong. That that doesn't work. That one was biscuit barking in the garden. Um, the neighbours that way have got a puppy, and he keeps hearing the puppy in the background. I think we're going to do this one actually. And the poor little puppy is so eager to want to play, but of course. There's a six foot wall between us and we don't know those neighbours, so bless. I'm sure the dogs are talking to each other. Right, let's hope a bit of a paint scuba on there. Let's see what this comes out like. 
some of my paints are tending to separate because I've had them a long time, some of them. Um, I need to do some sort of project, I think, where I literally use up all of my old paints. Um, the ones that I don't use that often, and not because I want to get rid of them, but because, huh, sneakily, if I use them, that gives me an excuse to buy new ones. Um, but also, I, I just want to get some just backgrounds made up, just so that the paint's not sitting there and separating and going to waste. I'd rather have it all ready to go. So, right, I'm going to come in, press this down, give it a few seconds to think about itself, lift it up, and press it onto the piece of gold. As you can see, there's plenty of it there. I might actually come in and brayer that again so that when I get the next impression, it will be less because the paint is drying. As you can see, it's given me that on there. I quite like that. I'm going to go in the opposite direction this time. Press down again. We can take another look at that now. I quite like that. That looks like vintage wallpaper, you know, like stripes in a boudoir, maybe. I quite like that. That's. I would be tempted to leave that as is, to be honest, if I wasn't in the process of making this video. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to pop, pop it down again. Now, all of that on there might get dropped onto one of the others. Um, I think I might just grab this one and put it on there. Just so I don't waste that paint. Not that I waste paint. I will use it for something. Let's take a look and see how this looked. OK, I do like that. But I don't like that on the edge, though. So if I can pick up some of that same colour from the edges of here. Not sure how successful this is going to be, but if I can just pick up little bits, I don't mind because as we go along, we'll pick up more. That's not bad. Let's see what happened to this one. That's interesting. That's not interesting. A little bit stuck in there. That's getting interesting. So I can pick up anything to cover that edge up. I think the paint's going to be a bit too dry, to be honest. Let's just pick up the old patch. That's interesting. I think that needs black. To me, it needs black or it needs something really dark to give it a vibrancy. Now I'm going to come in with this. It's a bit dodgy because this is not totally dry. And I've run the risk of the surface of the paper being torn away by the paint and the jelly mat, but I don't think there's enough paint on here to be picked up. It gave it a hint. I'm okay with the hint. So I've got all of this down here. I'm going to keep this one out because I want to add this on to the next one. But I do need to pick this up. Let's see, am I in shot? I always forget to look at whether I'm in shot. Right, I think I'm going to come in and put a little bit of colour on here again. Um, just to pick this up and put it on that bit of tissue. So I'm going to use, this is one of my favourite colours, Burnt Sienna. So just a little bit of this on here. I don't need a huge amount. I'm notoriously bad for putting too much paint on the plate, which is why I normally have a 5 by 7 by the side of me, which I use as a palette, because I'm just bad at putting too much paint on. But in this instance, I think I might have got it right. So just put that over there, clean my brayer off, and as I've got a green square and a yellow square, let's put the brown square right in the middle. There you go. So we've got a few going on. I just want to do this one more time because I really think I want to add some black on this plate. And I think if I add black and then add that, to one or two of these prints it'll really make them pop now don't forget i said i'm not expecting to have finished finished prints at this point but i did want to show you how i utilized um my texture boards or i don't know what to call them but you know where i'm at you know the things i'm making oh that came out interesting there you go i'm liking that so these papers are normally used for collage so not worried about those. So 
let's just, so we need to get some black on the go now. So I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a look at what we've done, just me personally. Um, not that one. So I'm on, I'm on I'm off camera, but um, not that one. I want black on that one, definitely. That one could use something, but not, not at the moment. I think that could use black. I think if I do black on those three, and the three I'm talking about are this one, the one we've just done, and this one. Now, I'm going to use the, the line that we had here. Um, I don't want to use the big circles again. I'm going to use, this is another one, I didn't create it on screen, but it's another one of my favourites, and I just cut diamonds out of Fun Foam and stuck them to a board. As you can see, it's well used, it's one of my favourites. So I think between these two, three, sorry, we're going to be able to finish off these prints quite nicely. So let's have a look at getting black on the go, shall we? And let's start with this one. Um, just regular acrylic black. Um, I'm warming up to buy new black actually. I'm, I'm kind of running low on black. I do like a touch of drama. So, are we in screen? We are in screen. So hopefully this has given you some idea as to what you can achieve making your own boards. Now I do know some people will actually stencil um, texture paste onto boards, let it fully dry and use those as um, texture mats as well or texture boards. So know that you can use anything that will give you a raised surface is what you're looking for. Right, let's lift that off there and pop that down on there. It's left a nice pattern on there. So that gives me that. And I think I'm just going to come straight in with some lines. Give that a bit of a press. Just so that it's giving me some interest. And hopefully if I got this the right way around, just lift this off here. Sorry that you can't see this, guys, but if I put the camera up high enough for you to actually see a 12 by 12 and 12 by 12, it would be so far away it wouldn't be worth watching. That's given that some interest. Let's leave that as it is. So I'm going to rebrayer the black on this one. Now, the longer it sits, the more it's drying. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the gold one. Come on, Mr. Uh, no, not the gold one, sorry. This one. And I'm going to come in with my favourite plate again. I need to redo this one, so I've got this in a 12 inch. But cutting those diamonds took considerable amount of time, so I haven't got round to doing it yet. And I'm going to pull up a little bit from the down here. The down here? What's the down here? At the bottom edge, is what I meant to say. And pop that on here. Now, the trouble is, because it's not a 12 by 12, I can't create a continuous pattern, but that actually that's not a bad pattern that I've left on there. So, so as you can see, that's given it another layer of interest. And I'm gonna use that one as is, and I'm gonna be really risky, and I'm gonna put the entire sheet onto this and see what it picks up. Um, hopefully I haven't ruined that. I'm hoping it's going to give me some interesting something, and I've been quite quick about it. That's way interesting. I want to get get a bit down the edge if I can. Let's see if I can just brayer, press that down. Okay, that's that's really really interesting. So I'm just going to come across here with the brayer one more time. I don't think there's going to be anything that's going to pull up from that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to come in with the diamonds again and push down and see if I can pull some of it out to leave behind something that's interesting which looking at that I think it will do and then what I'll do is I'll find a relatively uninteresting um, 
previous jelly print and try and lift that onto it. So let's have a little, sorry, going under the table here. We're gonna have a bit of a, a bit of a look through, try not to drop these. Um, trying to find something that black would really be dramatic on. Now these are just literally me, that would be pretty dramatic. That might be dramatic. That would definitely be dramatic if it comes off on that. I don't really want to put it orange. I tend to use orange a lot in my jelly printing. As you can see, there's another orange one. Uh, ooh, that would be... That might be interesting. Let's see if it makes a short list. Oh, that would be interesting. Right, let's get rid of all of the others and actually have a look at what what I've chosen. I know this is drying there. It's intentional that it's drying there. Um, I'm feeling this one, to be honest with you. Although this one is calling to me, but I think there's not enough interest to come through it. But this one there is. So I think we're going to do this one. So. I'm having to think, what colour do I want to pull this with? Um, I could try and pull it with a metallic, but I don't. Metallics are not very good at pulling. Um, that's that's dry enough to roll out on. Hmm. Right. If I let's think about this logically. If I add blue to this, and it's not a transparent blue. It's going to wipe out everything. So if it's an opaque, it's going to wipe it all out. If it's a transparent, the blue will turn these into a sort of metallic green and it will intensify this blue. If I was to put like a crimson or a red on here, it would turn these into a purple and probably these into like a burnt sort of... Actually, I wonder... I wonder. Give me one second of thought here. Right, I've got permanent violet dark, which I believe is a transparent in golden. And I've got quinacridone, I so struggle with those names, violet in this colour, which also I believe is transparent. So I'm thinking one of those. And I'm thinking the quinacridone violet. I do apologise to anyone who can pronounce that properly and I'd be murdering it. So very, very sorry about that, but I, I don't do big words. I have enough problem with, obviously, with paint. I should get that off there. I'm trying to use a damp cloth nowadays instead of a wet wipe, you may notice. Um, just me trying to save the planet a little bit. And I know that we have to launder these, but you know what, if I'm laundering my clothing, I'm also just throw this in with my laundry anyway, which would be going, um, I'm not being a total goody two shoes. There are times when a wet wipe is the only option for me anyway. Um, so just know that I'm trying to do my best. Um, maybe it's something you want to consider. Do you always need to reach for a wet wipe or could you actually be doing the same thing um, with the damp cloth. I think in one of my coffees with Kerry, um, where I have little chats with people, I think at one point I did mention when I was a child, um, I remember mum always used to carry wet face cloths around with her in plastic bags, because there weren't wet wipes back then. Okay, I've got a feeling this is probably going to obliterate this entirely. But you know, at this point, I don't mind. I'm just, I'm just going to see what it gives me. And if it doesn't work, then you know what? No harm, no foul. It just means that I've got another background as a starting point. So I'll let that sit for a little bit. Maybe give it a bit of a brayer. Make sure it's fully in contact. So, and this will be the last plate. And then I'll pull them all back in and we'll take a look at them. Um, and I'll probably decide at that point whether they go back into the red box or whether they've made their way up to the next colour, which is amber. Oh, my word. OK, that wasn't what I expected. Um, 
It's absolutely fabulous, but it's not what I expected. So I get rid of some of that on the edge. I'm not sure it's going to lift off, but I'm willing to give it a go. Some little bit. So I'm working quite quickly because I don't I don't want to lose lose the coloration I've possibly got down there. Um, this is another reason I like doing jelly printing, guys. You never know what the plate is going to give you. I did not plan that. I can't even, well, I can see very faintly some of the diamonds. That was not planned. These here, this was actually from um, the creases from the previous tissue paper pull. But that, that's pretty darn fantastic, if you ask me. Let's see if I lift that a little bit off and get that covered. No, I can't. Right. I think we are done. So let me get rid of the plate itself. I will clean that up later by doing another pull um, with a lighter colour. Um, I need to stop at some point because what happens is you keep going and going and going. And before you know it, you've lost a day, but you've got 100 prints. So let's go and get the prints in that we've done. In less than an hour, I've taken some of the mundane prints and made them into something a bit more special. I actually quite like that one. That one's probably going to go into the amber, which means it's almost finished. This one is fine. I mean, it was just cleaning off the plate a bit. It will probably stay in the red box because it's definitely nowhere near ready. This one could potentially be really, really close to finished. I'm not keen on the whiteness down here. And I do think it needs just a little bit of drama in there. Um, I'm airing towards the side of purple to finish that one off. Um, that one is pretty near done as well. Um, I'm thinking that probably needs a little something in black. So I can't get my hand on the next one. Come on. Um, this one was a surprise. This was the one that I said was for Mariah because it was gold. Absolutely love that. That's going to go straight, fast track, right the way through to the green box because that's finished. I don't want to do more to that. This one, although it's subtle, I think that's probably going to be finished as well. Um, if I was going to do anything, I'd probably put maybe some letters or numbers on that. But I quite like that. I like the... That's a nice colour combination. This one will stay in the red box. This is, it's interesting, but it's it's not it's not going to stop the show, is it? Um, this one is, I think that will go into the amber box because that, that doesn't need a lot more. It needs the edges sorted out. It needs more of a punch. Um, not sure what the punch is, but it does need something. Um, not truly my colour scheme. Pink is a colour I struggle with. Um, I can see there's interest there. It'll probably go into the amber box because I think that just needs a little something. Maybe a bit of stenciling, a bit of masking, something like that to bring it through. Um, this was a surprise. Um, not happy with the way some of that tore around there, but that's totally fixable. I'm, I'm not worried about that. That was because the area had freshly been painted on. The paint had soaked into the surface of the paper and then when I gave it another pull, instead of pulling off the paint from the jelly plate, the jelly plate pulled off the surface of the paper. So a bit of a downside, but there you go. That's what that is. Um, interesting. I think, again, that needs a punch of darker or a punch of white. It needs, it needs contrast. It needs something like that. That one just, that is just a bottle of orange pop, isn't it? That's just... I like that. That's just that one makes me smile. And that's probably going to go through to the finished category. I'm not sure I want to add anything to that. But then everything within my um, storage system is actually fluid. Like today, I may think this needs nothing. But the next time I see it, I may go, you know, it needs to go in the amber box because the amber box means it needs a little something. But I don't know what that is yet. I don't know what that is. And then the very last one we did, which was this one, which is definitely go into the I'm absolutely completed and finished box that was just that I that just happened you saw it on screen here guys that just happened so I think that's enough for today um it's explained how I made them in the previous video I will do all the links um 
If you're watching this video first, if you look in that corner, there's a little V or a little read more. Click on that and in that I will put the link to the previous video where I actually showed making this one and described how I made these ones. Um, and then in that video, I'll put a link through to this one. So we're kind of done, guys. So um, that's Jelly Plate Play done for this month. Um, looking forward to your comments. See what you think about them. Tell me which you think is your favourite. Um, it's always interesting when I ask that because then I get 101 different favourites all the way through the, through the stream, which I think is magical. So all that's left for me to do is say um, goodbye, really. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye now.